Never have I been as disappointed as I am right now. And I'm sure I'm beating a dead horse with this. I'm not one to jump on trends. I'm not one to clout chase. I'm not doing this for views. I'm not doing this for sympathy. But I want people to understand where I come from. But in order to do that, because I know probably there's a chance a lot of people will see this that don't know me. So... Now normally I stick to gaming. Normally I stick to speedrunning. Normally I stick to doing what's fun and having fun and enjoying myself. I try to keep the personal shit out of here. I try to keep my personal life out of the internet. You know, I was always taught that. You know, uh, this boogie situation, this boogie 2988 situation really stings. It really guts me. Because let me tell you something, if it wasn't for that man, I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. In fact, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. I wouldn't have my camera on right now. I wouldn't be grinding on Twitch right now. I wouldn't be grinding on YouTube right now. I wouldn't have the courage to do the things that I'm doing right now. So, yes, this fucking hurts. And I've been watching this unfold in the shadows, in the distance. And honestly, it kills. It really does. It's like, it's like that one friend in your life, you know, that you know is doing wrong. And know there's nothing you can do to stop it. Let me tell you a story. Back in 2015 is when I first discovered Boogie. I discovered him from our video recommendation. Back when YouTube recommendations actually recommended shit you watch. And the very first video that I ever saw of his was a Francis video of him reviewing Mountain Dew. And he took every Mountain Dew and he drank it. All of the flavors that he had in his area and drank it. And that was my very first video I ever watched. Because I'll never forget that because that is also the same day that I got introduced to Kid Behind a Camera. Which the very first video that I ever watched of Kid Behind a Camera was him pranking his girlfriend at the time with the prank video that I, I fucking love it. I love the fact that he was, he was uh, pay, pranking his girlfriend into thinking that, she, that he was pissing blood. And she got pissed at him and locked him in the bathroom. And he used to freak out because he was claustrophobic. I've been kind of, I've been hooked on him ever since. And, and I'm sure, you know, I've, I've followed, I've followed Boogie for quite a while. I even followed him. I was one of the few Twitch stream like he was one of the few Twitch streamers I actually followed. And the very first one that I ever did was of Watch Dogs. But I'm not gonna keep much of your time. So make this quick. And honestly, this hurts me to make a video like this. This man literally saved my life. And he came at a time where I needed it. I needed someone to look up to. I needed someone to reach out and say the right things that I needed, you know? I mean, I was on the brink of suicide, man. I was depressed. I was miserable. I hated myself. I hated who I was. Everything that I have built here was because and is heavily inspired. Hell, I even have a character my whole personality, what you see right now. The last few years, especially in 2017, man, I've really watched this man go from undesirable and one of the biggest influencers of all time to a spiral from which 
I have never seen. And if I could really pinpoint exactly where I noticed it, it was ever since his divorce. You know, and a lot of questions were on that day. Why did his wife divorce him? Why did those two get a divorce, you know? And ever since then, he's kind of went downhill. And disappointment doesn't even begin to describe how I feel. You know, and a man who preaches about values and preaches about being an influence, it's sad to see. You know, you scammed your audience, and I'm over here grinding my ass off to barely even 10 viewers, not asking them for a single dime. I don't care about donations and money and all the other bullshit. That's material. I don't care about money. Never did. People donate to me, that's fine. That's not why I stream. I stream because I love it. I game because I love it. It's one of my passions. It is my passion, my ultimate passion. That in music is my passion. So I don't give a shit about clout, I don't care about money, I would never fucking scam any of my audience. And then, and then we go ahead and we see you go and you make a complete and utter ass of yourself on live TV in that boxing match. And I still supported that. I still supported it. I'm proud to see someone had the balls to go on there. But you made an ass of yourself. For what? Pennies? Money? Why? Why would you want to do that? To prove what? You made Wings look like a better person. When Wings is making more sense than you, something's wrong. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm a big Wings fan. Honestly, I'm not really a huge Wings guy. I never was a Wings guy. I didn't know who the hell he was at first. You know, but from what I've gathered before the Locale podcast, before all that other stuff... You know, it was, I, I've known him from Rage Compilations, and I int got introduced to his channel, and you know what? His channel's not too bad. You know, he, he's a he's a Siege player, and that's the main thing that he plays. He went from Call of Duty to Siege. He plays a lot of Siege. And he's pretty good at it, to be honest. I, I feel like he's pretty good. By my standards, it's me saying somebody's good at something, don't... Take it under a great assault. It doesn't take much to be good at my watch because my autistic ass literally thinks and it gets impressed easily by a lot of things. But the one thing I will never be, and I could never be, is a victim. I could never come out here and say, I have autism, cry me a river. I have disabilities, cry me a river. I could never do that. Because I have integrity. You know, and Boogie helped me with that. You know, he helped me stand up for myself. He helped me become the man that I am today. And what a fall from grace he has came. Especially since his divorce. And now we got to talk about the one thing that I don't want to talk about. The whole reason why I'm here. The whole reason why I'm uploading this on my channel in the first place. Before I get back to my game. I gotta talk about the recent controversy. And I don't want to. Believe me, I don't. I don't want to join the hate mob and all that other shit. I don't. And I've watched a lot. And I was there. For both of those, you know, you, you say you needed money 
For starters, don't ever fucking do that. Don't ever come out and tell people you need money. That's stupid. You're leaving yourself... You're a, a glutton for punishment. If you do shit like that. Just be like, hey, I don't want to make this video, but I need money. You already failed. You clearly do. Just come out with it. Say, I need money. I need some money and I need your help. Just come out with it. Don't even start the video and say, I really don't want to make a video like this. Just come out and say, I need money. But the thing is, that's not what I'm bothered by. This is the same guy, Boogie, that lost money in crypto before. And you are making a coin. And I get why you did it to make fun of Andrew Tate. I get it. But the fact that you actually went and did it and made the coin, it's kind of sad. And the fact that you refuse to give them their $10,000 back when you're caught is even more pathetic. I would not I would love to have the audience that you have, man. I would love to. I, I mean, there are times, dude, I've been busting my ass for years to get an audience that you have, Boogie. And you squandered it. And you shitted on it for so long. And now I finally realized something. Even right now, everything that you have ever said even the words that saved my life was a lie. Everything you ever did that I looked up to was a lie. A character, just as fake as your Francis videos. And it hurts me to say that. And then the recent, recently, Somebody said that they were hurting for money. Let me tell you something. If I got that offer on the table, I'm not the biggest Keemstar fan, but let him offer me that much money that you got offered, and I swear to God, I'm fucking taking it. Because I could use that $80,000. I could use that to better myself. I could use that to pay these people, these artists that desperately fucking need a job to fucking make this whole entire thing that you see right here. Give me some editing software. I could take that $80,000. I can give a lot of that money to make some new emotes for my fans. And let me tell you something. If I, if I told people I had cancer, and they didn't believe me because let me tell you something boogie this is why people don't believe you when you said you had cancer in the first place but sadly I believed you when they didn't and you know what's really sad about that whole thing and I know you've heard this story before the best way I can describe it because I gotta dumb it down to a little child which is pathetic you're, almost, you're older than me, and I have to dumb it down to my little cousin's level, who is like 10 years old. I know you've heard the story of the boy who cried wolf. I know when I was a kid, I've, I've heard that story when I was going to school. But for those of you that don't know what the fuck that is, like, who doesn't? The boy that cried wolf, I'll tell you that story. This has a lot to do with this situation. There was a boy that lived in town, and he decided it was going to be funny because a bunch of townsmen were around. And he cried, Wolf, he yelled, Wolf, Wolf, help me out, help me, there's a wolf here. And they all, everybody in town, grabbed their pitchforks and their torches, and they all came running. The boy was just laughing and laughing and laughing and said, you guys really fell for it. Haha, ha, that's hilarious. And then, next day, did it again. Tricked everybody. Then one day, there really was a wolf. And guess what happened? That boy cried wolf for real. And nobody came to his rescue. 
and he died. In the Greek mythology, he gets ripped apart. He gets killed violently. But in the American version, he doesn't. But let me tell you this. this is, the story is, Boogie, you cried wolf so much over the years. You've cried wolf, and everyone's came to your rescue, came to your aid. You scammed them, you've lied to them about your cancer. You're a sick man, Boogie. You're a sick man, Steven. It's pathetic to see. This is coming from someone who you saved their life and I wouldn't be here. I would not be here right now if it wasn't for you. And I thank you and I'm grateful that you saved my life. But your life, and I've tried to save yours, dude. I've reached out to you. I've tweeted out to you. When I seen that the hate mob starting to come, I'm here, don't worry, I got your back, dude, no matter what. Even in times where I shouldn't have had your back, I still had your back. I put myself in the pits for you. I jump in front of a bullet for you. But now, That's disgusting, and you're a nasty human being. And although I'm hurt, and although it does hurt me to say, this is me saying goodbye to you, Stephen Williams. So I know I'm not gonna like this what I'm gonna do next but it needs to happen for the first time I've been following you since 2015 I have been your on your YouTube since 2015 and you saved my life but for the first time very first time ever this is my Twitter. Currently. Right now. I followed you since 2015. No more. And I never thought I would have to do that. I never thought I would. So let me go back to YouTube here. So. As much as I don't want to. Goodbye, Stephen.